to tell more about him, but um, okay. Today. So you you take a look at him. Um, you you don't Knowledge. think he has any weapons on him? He's, his robes, they're not exactly form fitting, but in all the places you would normally check for bulging weapons like maces or something, nothing seems to be hanging out. Uh, Duraga, you get a hunch about this guy. Uh, he's definitely about to go on some sort of like pro prolicitizing. You, I mean, you just converted, so you know exactly what this is like. He's about to try to spin some sort of religious or some sort of offer towards you guys. Uh, he doesn't seem hostile. He, in fact, seems pretty happy to see you. Eridos, okay, you identify these robes pretty easily. They are Fermian emissary robes. This guy is a half dragon. Hmm. For me, is of course a island nation ruled by a gold dragon. It only has mm. one city on it, the city of Promise, which has a extremely high wall. People who go there never leave except for the emissaries, and they bring the best of humanity and, on occasion, elven kind there to breed like supermen. <laughs> they want to become the best lawful good humanity has to offer. Wow. He is like, I have heard that among you there are many heroes, my friends. Travel spreads in front of you. That Ameko Kaijitsu graces your presence. I wish to speak with her. Will you send her to me? Uh, you are mistaken. Ameko Kaijitsu is not on this caravan. She's on the next one. Oh, make a bluff check. <laughs> I wish I had a foghorn here for when you fail. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, he, he's like, oh, oh my apologies. Uh, can you tell me what that caravan looks like? I had been told it had the exact composition that yours has. Was I perhaps wrong? No, you are mistaken. The next caravan has a bright Gaudi sign for Ven Vinder's general store. Oh, Ven Vinder's general store. I was general about store. to say that to Aid. Damn. <laughs> Great minds. Do you do you corroborate that? You're like, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> In vendor's general store. He's like, well, I am sure the two of you would not lie to a humble emissary of a lawful good dragon like myself. <laughs> of course not, friend. Of course not. <laughs> I will continue southern along this path. I uh, the other wish you a good day. Me. And one day, perhaps, we shall see each other again when you are the best humanity has to offer. And I will take you with me back to Hormia. All praise, yeah. all, all praise to the great dragon who rules over us all. All praise. All praise. Good day now. Bye bye now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, wow. And I fill the rest of the party in and it's like, yeah, that place, bad choo choo. What? Like, Eridos doesn't, Eridos doesn't like the idea of pe like keeping guess, people yeah, penned up at all. Yeah, yeah, I guess you wouldn't like it. Here, here's your little article on Hermia for anyone wondering. It is ruled by Mankare, Shepherd of the Light. He is the contractual dictator. You sign away your legal rights to be ruled for the rest of your life by him. <laughs> All decisions I don't are care if you I don't uh, care if you're lawful good. That no, that does not fly with Eridos. A magical being made of pure law and goodfulness? Who else would you want running you? It burns. I mean, it burns. yeah, it sounds it good on Sounds good on paper, but when you realize that you're basically ceding over your life to this guy, uh uh, no. I don't like that. I don't I think it make it would like Rob that Ford. either. <laughs> I take it over Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, at the end of this day, you will arrive in which year? Is it 22nd? Third day? It is the third day. And no encounter. So you arrive on Wolf's Ear. The same thing happens as before. They're going to overcharge you 10% unless you'd like to talk to them. Try to talk them down. And that's I'll try to talk them down or at I least... Prove myself a hero was the condition to get rid of that. Yes. Yep. You had well, to I don't think Eridos... I don't think Eridos knows what the hell's going on, so maybe I'm not if to talk them down, then to if, like, like what what is the real issue here? Oh, okay. We right. had the issue in Sandpoint, sure. we had the issue... Rather than going for a lower price, you could reveal information, which would be interesting. Uh, 
So, the trader in this village, his name is Blorkin. Wow. Where Horkin was fat and uh, shifty, this guy Horker? looks kind of like Jafar. Oh, okay. So, he's like, yes, <clears throat> welcome, my friend. I am Blorkin of the village of Wolfseer. Perhaps you have heard of my cousin three days down the road, Horkin. I assume he sent you with well wishes to us. Uh... Yes, yes, something along those lines. Uh, we were hoping, <laughs> we were hoping to uh, maybe uh, trade uh, basic provisions, maybe some trade goods on uh, our way north. It says, ah, yes. Take the opportunity to sell stuff. Yeah. Trade goods. You will find little buyers here for it. It is the wrong season, and we are a small and poor village. Perhaps you would have better luck in Riddleport, but two days to the west. Perhaps. In fact, um, I know a person that you could sell them to. Yes. <clears throat> Let me see here. He pulls out, like, his version of a Rolodex. <laughs> <laughs> He's like... <clears throat> his name is Dolfo Bertio. Yes. <clears throat> you can find him on the southern box. Just tell him that the Blorkin sent you. You will get a good deal. Uh -huh. Anyone who is Come a friend on, of Nobody Forkin sense motives or anything? I mean, we've been oh, throwing Oh, yeah, you can make a sense motive if you like. Somebody do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. make a... I got a... What's wrong? Motive. You guys don't trust Dworkin? Boom! Okay, um, so... You get a hunch about this guy. Um... He can't afford your trade goods. And it seems like it's hurting him that he can't. It's it's not that he can't hurt, uh, afford them, but it seems like he just doesn't want them. <clears throat> Combined with your trader mercantile background, you probably get the idea that given that it's still early, uh, like late winter, you know, uh -huh. they're just going to sit around and do nothing for him. Okay, but maybe he has trade goods to sell us or just uh, he basic has provisions? To sell you for normal okay. price. For normal price, for now. Yes, for now. Um, he is trying to get you to go to uh, Dolfa's, uh, and it is not for not for your benefit, but for his own, it sounds like. Hmm. So he is like, yes, go to my good friend Dolfa Dirtio. Tell him that Blorkin sent you. Wink. I assume he gets some kind of commission from that. <clears throat> that would be what your sense motive would, in fact, imply. Ah, very well. No reason not to. All right, kickbacks or kickbacks. Then he says, "Ah, is that a Mako Kaijutsu I see in your caravan?" <clears throat> I and look over. Is she actually standing right there? Well, she's somewhere in the distance, right? Yeah. Like you're, you've, you've been pulled close to town. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. Mm. I'll say, why, why? Yes, it is. And he says, uh, by any chance, is her brother a god with you? You know, Horkin asked me the same question, and I could not figure for the life of me why. He turns toward you and says, you know, if the answer to that question was no, you would have just said that, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> no, but when the last when the last three places you've been to... You've been to ask about Agag, Agag, Agag. One tends to get a bit curious. Says, Do you not know you travel with a man who is such scum? Wow, that's kind of harsh. I... Could you elaborate on that? Says, well, Ameko is a sweet and beautiful butterfly. The greatest uh, Verizia has to offer, I'm sure you yes. agree. Yes, uh, of course, yes. Uh, Agag is, of course, <laughs> some base-born orphan adopted into her family. And they say that he influenced his older brother, Suto, to the life of crime, piracy, and eventual murder and demon summoning. Oh. And, uh, yes, wow. Agog is a terrible person, and they say he is even a member of the Zarni. And not the cool, friendly Zarni. He is one of those murderous, <laughs> lock-picking, backstabbing, knife-in-the-dark poisoner Zarni. You know, not the friendly, <laughs> helpful kind that, uh, you know, patrol your... Uh, your your community and make sure that no one is shaking you down for money who is not Verizian. <laughs> you know, like the Mafia in the early Mafia days. Not the uh, Mafia in the any other than early days. 
Like Godfather 2, not like Godfather 1 or 3. <laughs> of course, of course. Wow. Godfather is, of course, the tale of a Verizian noble family after they arrived from Chelyas <laughs> over the course of three generations. Uh, I will take ten and say that no, Agug is not with us. On bluff, for a 19. Um, let's look at the bluff thing. That might be a little unbelievable, considering you've already kind of blown that. <laughs> You're like, why is everyone asking about a gug? Uh, yeah, that is kind of unlikely. So it's a 14. I'll roll it out. I'll roll it out. Roll a one. Roll a one. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> So he is like, I do not believe you. I will not charge you more because you are lying. I will charge you more because you are harboring, harboring a fugitive of justice and uh, uh, a horrible demon spawn baby who is not worthy to travel in the footsteps of the great, beautiful, graceful, and all-knowing <laughs> okay, character okay. written by we, the we guy who it. was a creative designer it. for this game. We, we wow. get it. She's amazing. <laughs> I just want to reiterate. This is James Jacobs' own character that he wrote into the storyline as the main character of this adventure path. So, he's looking at you, James Jacobs. <laughs> yes, I, yes, 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 yes. Yes, I, yes, I get that. The Mako is amazing. Last time I brought this up, I do write my own characters into this. They are rarely awesome in what they do. They mostly end up being Spark Booty Blaster. <laughs> Spark Booty Blaster. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, while he's doing this, are the rest of us still going about our caravan duties, or what are, yeah. what's, yeah? Okay. It's a normal day for you guys. <clears throat> you're picking up more food while you're here? Call yeah. 10% yeah. increase. Yep. Gonna have so to. Very, very well. Cool. We'll, we'll we take the additional 10% left, right. so that's not even two days. Okay, so let's see here. I so, before have, we leave awesome. today, I want to go... Uh, Visit the town. What was the name of the last village? Uh, this current one that you're in right now? No, the last one. Galduria. And what's the name of the one we're in right now? Wolfseer. So, I think um, Doug and I are going to have to have a talk after this. <laughs> Duraga, do you want Smith to come with you into town, or do you think your cat is enough muscle for you? Whoa. <laughs> I'd be Whoa. happy to bring you my stalwart and feisty companion. <laughs> I want to go drinking. Duraga, and you are the really perfect the perfect caravan. perfect man to come with me, in fact. So uh Did I yeah, hear somebody I, mention something about drinking. I wanna head to the bar. Well, before okay. you wander off to drink, did we buy two provisions or not? I sure hope so. I Is mean, I wouldn't be able to do this until the very end of the day when I'm done hunting. So Yeah, I mean, you guys travel for 12 days, or 12 hours, and then you spend 12 hours resting. So yeah. you got four hours of downtime where the caravan isn't moving. Right. Yeah. And you're not asleep. <laughs> so, yeah, we buy whatever permissions are necessary to get us okay. to the port. so you buy two more units of stores. Um, they, they have a tavern. It's not like a tavern where you would sleep in. The town's far too small for that. It's just literally a bar. Yep. And when you come in, I'm going to pull a, uh, a Snows of Summer on you. Uh, the innkeeper is uh, like a plump woman in, around middle age. She's got like tied back graying hair. And her name is... Look at this fancy random name generator. <laughs> it generates by nationality. Her name is... Uh, Galulu. <laughs> she says, oh, look at you, dearies. And she like, so who came with? Was it Eridos? You Did you come? Yes, uh, Agug, I came did with. Did you come? Yes. Okay, so she uh, directs the four of you. She chooses where you sit. She like gives you assigned seats. And then she's like, I think you're going to want the, the cabbage soup and you're one to beef stew. She points to Gog and she's like, barbecue ribs. And then she points to Eridos <laughs> and she's like, Eridos. And then she's like, no, I got this, I got this. 
I'll give her a. I'll give her two minutes. Uh, and then she's like, "Cheeseburger, got it." <laughs> <laughs> so she's deciding your order for you, and uh, she's like, "Now, what will you like to drink?" Are any of those items horribly out of season, or like, is them. there all of them? Uh, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> like, uh, is she is she picking the the old stuff, right? So it's like today's special is fish from last week's special fish. <laughs> today's special is fish like soup. Um, you don't have chicken soup, do you? She's like chicken soup. Uh, yes, yes, we do. Yes. I. What was she like offering? Noodles in your chicken soups, a gentleman. Sorry, noodles. Yes. Hearty soup. I will accept her offer, even though she has so boldly. She's chosen your for cabbage me. soup, Duraga, so... Uh, I will take my cabbage Excellent. soup. Sure, I've I had have worse. never had a cheeseburger before, so I will try this. Is this a Andrin dish? He says, no, no, they make it in, uh, in Absalom. She, you know, Abs- she Absalom. Out. The nobles Absalom. there, they're crazy. How far is Absalom <laughs> from here? A couple thousand miles. Very far. Oh, you must be well traveled to know a dish of such a widely varied location. I'll tell you what, then. It turns out I matched up the ruler so you can figure out how far <laughs> it is to Absalom <laughs> by using it. All right. I, took, I did the work. I work right there. Absalom, 1,500 miles away. Sun scaled like a mother. All right. All right. That's, that's almost 1,200. Almost 20. 1,276 miles as the crow flies. Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'd, I would ask her, wow, that's a, that's such a long ways away. How would you be familiar with such an exotic dish for these parts? She's like, have you ever heard of books or word of mouth? It's not <laughs> like we don't have cows here or beef <laughs> or cheese or lettuce or buns. So you just put them I- together in a specific combination. So are you, you are either my cooking, young man. You are either well traveled or well read. Those are both impressive feats for someone so close to a hive of scum and villainy like Riddleport. She says, "Oh, why, thank you." <laughs> she kind of pats you on the head, and she's like, "Your mother trained you well. You're, you're, you're a good young boy. What are you doing with all these thugs?" Uh, I said, "Well, these thugs, you know, I have to keep uh, I keep the- them around." But uh, uh, we were actually hoping for a drink. Do you have a? Do you have something you'd recommend? <laughs> she says, why, yes, as a matter of fact, I do have a number of drinks I could recommend. How about the, the 20-year-old scotch? Or perhaps you'd like something Olfin. Oh, uh, I think Don't we're looking for something. Don't put hair on some... your chest, young man. <laughs> I think we're looking for something cheap and fiery. <laughs> she says, cheap and fiery. Well, <laughs> I hear that Sandpoint makes a fine pea marsh bog. Oh, God. like some of that beer. Do I recognize that and know how terrible it is? Yes, it's absolutely horrible. The Sandpoint Brewery <laughs> makes tons of it. And they just, so it's it's literally the natty ice of Sandpoint. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is uh this is a taste of home. I guess I'll take one before we leave. This is I don't know that the the name is canonical, but this is actually there is a Sandpoint Brewery. Yeah. And it does make a shitty uh, beer. So I will take a mug of the local flavor. She says, ah, yes, the local flavor. She looks around a little bit and she's <laughs> like, ah, all right. So all in all, your meal is going to come out to being four gold pieces with, uh, so how do I put this? Uh, lots of drink. I'm trying to think of a better word for it. <laughs> but she brings uh, as much as you can drink out of the cheap stuff. Which in Smith's case is not a lot. <laughs> All right. Uh, Eridos will pay uh, pay for this one out of pocket. Don't okay. worry about it. it. Is uh, is anybody else in the tavern from the town? Yeah, sure. I mean, like most of the town is going to be there, right? Because that's where people go at night. They hear right. stories told and such. All right. So Smith um... is going to spend a long time looking around. He will take twenty on perception for a nineteen. Okay. There is a man in the back of the tavern. He's got, like, lank, dark brown-black hair, and he's smoking a pipe and uh, kind of trying to hide in his green cloak slash hoodie. I was going to ask if he's a ranger. He's not a ranger, actually. Does he have three small people with him? No, he does not. 
I'll tell you what he does have, though. He does have the official bounty hunter seal on his cloak clasp. And oh, he's got shit. a scroll tube at his side. Oh, shit. He seems to be paying very rapt attention to your table and doing his best to look like he's not watching you. Is there anybody in the room that looks like a bard? Uh, No bard, but certainly a couple storytellers. Uh, that's who I'm interested in. Okay. I uh, thought I had months left. Months! There's a there's a old salt, you know, uh, so it looks like Jeremy Irons. All right. And uh, he's, like, <laughs> telling a couple rumors that they've heard out of Sam Point. All right. Yeah. Is he at the bar or someplace I could easily join in? I, uh, I he's wouldn't by want the hearth because, like, it's yeah, still okay. chilly outside, so he's by the hearth telling stories to the young children. He says... Ah, yes, the soggy river monster was seen again, this time by fishermen on the new fish trail. They said it stood uh, taller than a man, had white skin, and has a mouth that opened all the way down to its neck. It was eating what looked like a goblin on the far side of the river, which is why the farmer managed to escape. I tell you, it's a true tale. I heard it myself from the man. Um, oh. I, I would come over and work. Warm my hands by the fire, and uh, when when it's easy to interject, I would uh, I would say, ah, well, I can tell you a little bit more to that story of the soggy bottom monster. So everyone's if heads like swivel towards you. You would like to hear about it. He says, and what's a I'm young man like you doing traveling about without your parents? Ah, uh, leaning close to Daragi's ear, and is like, you sure you don't want me to feel feel this one? I do not. All right. Um, so, we'll so you lead it close, and Daraga like puts his hand on your face and pushes you away, like bitch, please. Respect my gangster. I will tell you a tale to harrow your bones, my friends. A tale of four stalwart adventurers, and a taste for justice. And I will attempt to, uh, I will attempt to tell them the story of the Sandpoint Monster, and particularly, I'd like to expouse upon Smith's efforts and his valiant uh, saving of Eridos in his okay. defeat and the magic of the gold dragon and whatever. So you're going to tell I the I think all that day. happened later. Well, yeah, but I'm going to tell See, the story. I mean, the thing is, you guys so actually did kill the Soggy River monster. Right. right. Yeah. Right. And so I'm going to tell them about how... I'm going to tell them that story. I can't wait for you to fail and everyone to be like, go back to your <laughs> table, child. Right, exactly. So it. I'm all right. Let's do Take it. Ten. So Take do you ten. want me to Take make <laughs> do you want me to make a profession check or a perform check? Oh it's definitely it's gotta be a perform check. Alright, so do I don't have, have a profession any profession that would match this? Or I was gonna say I didn't say profession. Okay. I said I was gonna I have diplomacy. No, no which I doesn't count, right? Because it's perform. Because you're you're telling a tale. You're not right. relating a story. Alright. Alright, yeah, so you're I'll roll exaggerating deep. Smith's part in this. Yeah, so I rolled nine. Um, oh. So I think that the story is going to spread, but no one's going to believe it for now. Yeah, that's but fine. You, you've planted the seeds. And so the, the salt beard is like, I'm Jeremy Irons, and I'm telling you right now, boy, go back to your table. <laughs> <laughs> no tall tales are welcome here. We are men of great wisdom and respect. <laughs> Perhaps your father over there, and he gestures to Smith. Because Smith is like thirty, right? He's like, "Perhaps your father over there should take better care to guard your tongue." Uh, old salt, keep your ear to the ground, my friend. You will hear truth eventually. And I'll return to the table. Okay, Erdos, are you doing anything? Like, I mean, you heard this tale, right? It was, it was awful. He was like, and then, and then, and then my cat bit the monster from behind and picked him up. And everyone's like, where did this cat come from? You never mentioned it before. Awesome. I'm like, as Durago comes back to the table, I'm just gonna pat him on the back, toss a silver at the, at the bar, keeps away, and it's like an another one for him, please. Uh, meanwhile. While all this is happening, I guess I'm going to be taking 20 on diplomacy to gather information. Oh, Just... you can't take 20 on diplomacy. It takes a D4 hours, man. Oh, D4 hours? All right. All Times right. I'll 20. Try... Yeah. I'll try gathering information then. All right. Just a plain roll. All right, what are you trying to gather? Uh, Basically just the lay of the land. Okay, Maybe so from here to Riddleport, anything, anything going on, anything like that. And maybe a smith can warn me about the body oh, hunter like in the corner. One. I like this one. So, uh, 
You you hear rumors. Um, you're speaking with a traveler. Let me use my random name generator here. Her name is Ellen Louie. And she says, ah, yes, I saw it. You you seek to know the lay of the land. Well, and they say the land is the dragon and the dragon is the land. Some travelers coming from up the coast north of Riddleport said they saw a dragon. A big black one flying around central Mosswood. I hope they were drunk or something. We don't need dragons living that close to this town. Aye, I heard that there was a horrible dragon attack on Sandpoint just a few years ago. They say that a druid, like, somehow grabbed him and drowned him underneath the water. That's pretty impressive, right? I don't suppose uh, you're a druid, are you? Ah, uh, unfortunately I am not. Oh, you can't My friend over there. into a water elemental and drag a dragon under the water. <laughs> oh, I guess uh, there not, are not everyone I meet world. is that special. Not many in the world can do that. No. He says, well, I'll tell you, I've been hearing a lot of rumors lately. Quite a few about uh, a band of adventurers traveling through the Southlands, heading towards Magnamar. Apparently, they cleared out an entire forest full of uh, goblins. Aye, they say that they're quite keen, these young young gents. They are led by a horrible monstrosity, a large <laughs> beast with fur like silk. And claws like bananas. <laughs> you had me up until bananas. Oh, yeah. Aye, she, like, grabs a banana from behind the bar. She's like, aye, I have no idea why this unseasonal <laughs> item only available in island nations and other places to the south would be here. But this is a friggin' banana. Now imagine a razor-sharp edge on one of these. <laughs> That the sounds iron in his body terrible. makes this thing harder than steel. Aye, they say that this enormous cat beast, who was ridden by <laughs> by his uh, his owner, they take him into battle, and then he slices down any in his way, and then when he's done, he sits there and licks his uh, blood <laughs> right off of his claws. Oh, you must be talking about Babu. He's like, and I point she out says, the window. Aye, Bab. The, the name is very close to what they call him. What do they call him? They call him Babao, the demon cat. <laughs> they say that he and the rest of his half-demon party travel the southern lands, trying to find all the goblin babies they can to eat and increase their demonic powers. Oh, no. Is Babu anywhere near here? Did anywhere around? Babu to the tavern? <laughs> Is he waiting uh, outside? No. Okay. no, no, no. Babu would wait at the caravan. <laughs> she says, Aye, it sounds like a tall tale, and yet I heard it not three days ago from a traveler on his way from Sandpoint. And I find him not to be an untrue fellow. From Sandpoint, you say? Aye, from Sandpoint. They say that the party is heading west into Magnamar, where they will uh, hunt down all of the Zarni and kill them all and steal their souls. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's been playing telephone, man. <laughs> wow. This this is a quite the unbelievable tale. I will be sure to spread the news around. These these half demons, they are not to be trusted. She must have us confused with some other party from some other adventure path. <laughs> uh Arthur, do I notice the bounty hunter at any point during all of this? Make a perception check, I would think. May I take 20 as well? Um, do you have some reason that you would be looking around a bar really intensely for two minutes? Well, I guess if Smith was. And, I don't know, has Smith I mean, clued me in? Did he mention anything along these lines? Did he? Did he? I, I don't think he... That's my perception for when I came in when I was looking for the story. Yeah, you, you probably catch sight of him. Mine's I mean, he's not... Oh, at there this we go. point, he's been spotted, so he's kind of being a bit more obvious about it. Yeah, you catch him back there. Hmm. <clears throat> I thought I had months. Months! Are you saying that out loud? No, not out loud. Okay. Just in inner monologue. So, so we get like I a had more time. back. And so we're seeing you from above, and then... A ghostly image of you appears, and it's like your headspace, and you're like, Months! Months! <laughs> I, I have more appears, time! And you're just saying that. But she you're just casually down. drinking at the bar, but we see that your hand, like, tightens on the subtly, glass. Subtly putting the moves on uh, this random woman. 
Really? That's what you, is this what they call game from where you come from? <laughs> Just asking her about the general area and then slowly moving. Putting the move. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm interested. Uh, we, we were about to take a break, but I will let you make one last chance to put the moves on this woman, as you call it. <laughs> No, just being if what you are seeking about. this night is companionship, you'll need to make a diplomacy check to request a favor. In this case, it's a pretty <laughs> no. one. Nah, I'm just flirting. Okay, alright. You Make a charisma check, because so far all you've done is go, A banana! <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you a banana! No, dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh, shit! Fuck. Okay, yeah. All right, apparently where you come from, they do spit game. Uh, yeah, so, um, why don't you tell me how you think this goes? I don't think you're going to sleep with her tonight, but certainly you've made an impression. Uh, well, after I got all the information I needed, I just talked to her about more mundane things like life in the village, life on the caravan, stuff like that, making subtle innuendos along the way. Okay, all right. You run it in the long man. game. All right, well, she indicates she's obviously a trade, Atlanta trader, but a, a wanderer as well. She's on her way north, um, but she's not going to Riddleport. <clears throat> Perhaps we will. Well, she's we're on her way to White Throne. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we'll need her. <laughs> you better hope in, not. <laughs> in Rain of Winter. Yeah. Oh man, that's a good idea. What was her name again? It was <laughs> Ellen Louie. Yeah, I'm gonna write that shit down. Boom. Continuity. And then you could be like, try to try to seduce her, and that one, and she'd be like, "But I have a boyfriend. <laughs> He's in Riddleport." <laughs> All right. Okay. So yeah, let's do it. It's time. It's time to take that break. Uh, we're probably gonna go for ten minutes. So let's All see right. here. Uh, we got this thing. I could have uh, used those crits on my acrobatics checks. <laughs> Let's see here. We'll come back at uh, 16 after. Boom. There we go. Thank you for joining us tonight, guys. Thank you to everyone who's followed so far. Please follow, like, and subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in knowing where we come from, you can uh, check my YouTube on the profile page on Twitch. And find all of the old campaign stuff for this particular campaign, Jade Regent. You can find all of our other stuff from all the campaigns we've done so far. Or uh, you can join us Tuesday, Thursday, now every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for games on those particular nights. And we'll be back in just over 10 minutes. Thanks, guys.